tail as old as... 92. Rehashed as it can be. Barely a movie. Animated most poorly. Quite expectantly. Beauty and the Beast. Ruined it. Once in a while, when something popular comes out, you get some cheap cash-ins made to capitalize on that. And that was pretty much the marketing model for Good Times Entertainment. It was low-hanging fruit for them when Disney would popularize an old story or fairy tale with one of their animated features. So shortly after Disney's theatrical or home video release of one, companies like Good Times Entertainment would be there to try to either fool you or just make you give in to their cheaper version of the story. In fact, Disney even sued Good Times Entertainment at one point over their covers looking too similar to theirs and fooling customers. This resulted in Good Times having to clearly mark their versions of these films. I'm guessing that was only for a time, though, as there isn't actually a clear Good Times Entertainment marking on the front of this DVD release. Maybe actual Good Times themselves sued Good Times Entertainment over their failure to provide such a time. No, that wasn't a stretch! Good Times had a few production companies they usually teamed up with to shovel out these quick cash-ins, and in this case, it was Golden Films. Who made getting what information I could on this a little extra confusing for me, as they produced yet another Beauty and the Beast a couple years later, and this one isn't even mentioned on IMDb. Good Times are dead now, though. Good Times Entertainment, too, as they filed for bankruptcy in 2005. Only one year after this DVD's release. I'm so lucky. Actually, well, good times have come to an end, we can take comfort in the fact that Golden Films are still up and running and have even partnered with Sony for some of their releases. They even have a website with previews, clearly from VHS rips. Clara, what are you doing here? These also often contain random cuts and might even spoil the ending. And speaking of spoiling, let's get on to their 1992, one year after the Disney version of Beauty and the Beast. But to prime us first for what we are about to experience, we get two little shitters riding the cheap cashing coaster through the Good Times Library, which leads us to... Beauty already dancing with the beast? Pfft, yeah, why not? Who the hell cares about building up to that anyway? The movie jumps back after the opening song, but this kind of kills a whole lot of that whole storytelling thing, doesn't it? Hmm, this beast fellow, he seems awful scary, huh? Look at what a mediocre dancer he is. Alright, so they gave us a little... Big teaser, but we're still gonna have to watch the movie to find out if the beast has a heart of gold or not. It's good to me to say the very least. Never mind, you've already seen the Disney version, why are you watching this? So quite a bit of the basics of this film are actually taken from the original story, but of course they are done in a dinky manner without any real build-up to them since this film only has a 48 minute runtime. Oh, hello sisters! How are you? Apparently better than you, Beauty. Her name is actually just Beauty? What unimaginative jackass came up with that? This can't be! They're... they're... Okay, explained. 
The Beauty and Beauty and the Beast is actually this generically named most of the time. Guess crazy old Maurice figured if he named a baby that, she'd have to grow into it. Or should I say crazy old old man? Because they never say his name. Or maybe he just tried naming every child he had Beauty. I'll name you Beauty. Oh, never mind. I'll name you Beauty. Oh, damn it. The third time's the charm. And yes, I know Belle pretty much means beauty as well, but at least it sounds a little better to us in English. Though, she is in France, so yeah, she'd actually be just as generic in her actual town. Just like the original story, Beauty Belle has two sisters, and this movie pretty much turned them into the wicked stepsisters from Cinderella. Though, I can't imagine why there'd be any sibling complex between Beanpole and Fat Ass with an old man named the third one Beauty. She also had three brothers, but this one cut that down to two. Unless something happened to the third one. I'll name you Beauty. Thank you, Father, for seeing the beauty inside. I didn't realize there was another boy. I only need two of those. Maybe you want to come shopping with us one day, Beauty. But I forgot. You like to visit the poor section of the city. Your clothes are perfect. You fit in with all the beggars who live there. Wait, did I just speak words at me? I think they did. I wonder what they meant. Wait a second, I think they just insulted me. That's it. It's time for this beauty to become a beast. Get it? Uh, wait, I'm not talking still. Why am I standing out in the rain? Well, we don't have to wonder long where Beauty got that brain that powers those vacant stairs from. Oh, this can't be. I know these clerks who run our offices in these cities. I hired them all myself. They're, they're very, very good men. They're thieves, Father. Are you sure? They can't be thieves. I even asked them if they were thieves, and they answered no. No, we're going to be fine. We're broke, Dad. Oh, hmm, I wonder if I can sell my stupid sons as slaves. Ah, oh, you said that one out loud, Dad. Oh, shit. So this again is part of the actual tale, with Beauty's father being a merchant who had boats go missing, causing him to lose most of his money. I've spent the day among the less fortunate bringing them food. I'm afraid it's our own family which will soon be in need of help. Wow! Look at this cake I'm holding! Oh, damn it! This forces the beauties to move to the country, where, unsurprisingly, her sisters still act like obvious bitch fucks in front of beauty, and she's still too stupid to notice. <laughs> One of Father's ships we thought lost has docked in the harbor, and it's the largest of our ships, filled with goods, no doubt. Yes, no doubt, even though I said we hired 
thieves, plus the boat was hit by a storm, let's celebrate prematurely. We're not rich yet, you know. We don't even know if there's any cargo on that ship. So I really don't know why I was so happy in the previous scene. Again, like the original tale, the two assy sisters ask for expensive gifts while Beauty only asks for a rose. However, the two brothers beat her by only asking that they don't blink out of existence. <laughs> no promises! Oh man! Who was that guy? Who am I for that matter? Here's the bill of lading, Father, so you can make sure the ship's captain hasn't cheated us out of any cargo. If he has, you'll have to fight him on your own, Dad. We're not coming, because we're so busy with all the... Bye! Whoa, horsey! Oh, whoa! Whoa, don't take off at such a slow pace! Movie... Seriously, we've got less than 40 minutes left now, and the only things we've gotten over are Beauty and her father are morons, the brothers made a witch upon a star to become real boys, and the sisters miss walking the streets. Ooh, I want to inspect the cargo holes. But, but, sir. Yeah, Harbor Master, I'll not ask you again. Now open the cargo hatch. As you wish. Oh, you will not outdo old man with pointlessly announcing actions, Harbor Master. Really, I'll light a lamp. Thanks. And now I'll look around with the lamp and be surprised that the ship that took heavy damage in a storm took heavy damage in a storm. My spices! They're ruined! These tea leaves are useless. Sure, they look perfectly fine in their jars, but I'm not selling tea and spices that were in wet boxes. Silk. It's good for nothing now. And look at those daughters of mine. They got wet in the rain. They're completely useless now. <laughs> For someone who is prematurely celebrating, you sure do have a defeatist attitude all of a sudden. You know something we don't, old man? No, clearly you don't. At least I'll find comfort with my favorite cow. She'll console me. Give me the hell out of here! Yes! Go ahead and rain, you miserable sky! I'm completely useless now. Lightning strikes a tree in front of the old coot, making his horse send him to... The perspective of complete nonsense. Look at this, there's no space in front of them. And the trees have to split into two and magically move around them so they don't just crash into them. Is that supposed to scare me? Yeah, I know it's really stupid to ask if a botched perspective shot is supposed to be scary, but I'm gonna do it anyway and keep harping on it. Alright, let's move on. Right into that perspective! Oh no, look at that! Now I'm stuck in it! It's so scary, because it doesn't make sense! Phyllis hasn't been funny since Mac and me! He's completely useless now. <laughs> How'd he throw me in the trash if he's already in here? Is that supposed to be scary? Shut up! Wait, am I telling myself to shut up? That doesn't make sense. SHUT UP! I keep digging this hole! A uh, castle in the midst of the forest. My mind must be going, old girl. <laughs> I like that the horse agrees he's crazy for seeing the castle, yet the horse sees it too, obviously. Stupid horse, what an idiot. Yeah, I said it. Hello? Hello? I've never heard such silence, have you, girl? <laughs> I've got a feeling someone's inviting you in. You wouldn't believe how many times I've been sent to jail because I see someone's door creak open and I assume that was an invitation. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Hey, will you rest in a warm stable tonight? Or a warm stomach. Either way, you'll be warm at least. Hello? 
He's the master of the castle here. What's that song I hear playing in here? Be our guest, be our guest, eat all our food, leave us dead. Well, don't mind if I do. <laughs> I'm a traveler who's lost his way. Bonjour, mon frère. I'm Lumiere, and welcome to Kettle. Ooh, a delicious candle. <laughs> Suck a fucking blur. It looks like, if I can trust my eyes, which I'm sure I can, I'm expected. And they tried to send this guy's counterpart, Maurice, to the loony bin. At least he had a candle and a clock and vitamin. Seriously, though, who the hell sees food prepared and goes, Well, this must be for me, the jackass who just broke in. Oh, well, well, thank you, kind chair. Lock this guy up. That chair doesn't even talk. Yeah, I heard it. Fine, lock me up too. Naturally, the old coot gorges himself, never thinking it hot, no one ever shows up and crashes for the night. Oh boy, that was the greatest shit of my life! I don't envy whoever has to go in there and clean that up, but I said I had to poop and the door creaked open, so obviously I was invited to let loose in there! I must have certainly lost my mark. No. Okay, I'm ready for my horseback. Uh. My, my friend, I'm so sorry. I'll miss you. Oh, roses. Yeah, at least I'll be able to bring back a lovely rose. So this is how you repay all my kindnesses? Beast 92, you've answered one of my long-time questions. I always wondered what it'd look like if a warthog fucked a Goomba, so thank you for that. Oh, I wish I could close my mouth. After all I've done for you, opening my home to you, giving you food and lodging, you dare to steal from me? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he does, considering that's all he's done since he got there. But, oh no, him being a jackass wasn't a problem till it came to your stupid rosebush. So, you dare steal from me, Winter? I'll destroy you! So, the beast is still punching the snow, huh? Yep. Wanna go see if the beast two castles down needs any servants? Yep. To steal what I love most in the world, my roses. You'll pay for this with your life. Well, I suppose he did kill that flower. A life for a life seems reasonable. I hate to state the obvious, but Disney did it better! Because they updated certain elements like this for their version, so Maurice trespassing was what set the beast off on him, and the rose was directly tied to the beast, so he had a good reason to be overly protective of it. Here it's just like, you can spit in my face all you want, but don't you dare walk on the grass! You see, I took the rose only as a gift for my daughter, Beauty! A daughter, you say? And named Beauty? Oh, it's a really deceptive name. I only called her that because she stinks and is ugly. Not buying her. Oops! I will strike you a bargain. You may go home and ask Beauty if she will die in your place. <gasps> I could not think of such a thing. On an empty stomach? Fine, here's second course. Okay, I'll sell out my daughter. I did bring back one gift. Oh, Father, you brought me my rose. Yes. Cherish it, my dear, for 
It will cost me my life. Yeah, don't make her feel guilty for the rest of her life or anything, old man. Oh, wait, this must be part of that. Oh, never trade Beauty's life for mine strategy. Robert and I could go with you. Between the three of us, we could overpower the beast and kill it. Oh, stop pretending you're a character that can affect anything in this story. Nathan, you would not say that if you saw the beast. It is beyond imagination. Oh shit, I didn't realize it's beyond imagination. Okay, you're dead, Pops. I packed you something to eat along the way, Father. Now I know I've done the right thing by letting him kill me instead of... <laughs> instead of who, Father? Oh no. What an accident. This ass may as well have came back with a beauty can die in my place t-shirt for how subtle he is. And if you even want to pretend he was being slightly genuine here, I'm glad he was unsure or not if beauty should go die for him until she brought lunch. Oh, nothing. It's nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's beauty, isn't it? <gasps> it's... Rare you see a cartoon be such a shitty actor, but there you go. <gasps> it's a wonderful castle, isn't it? I absolutely adore this place where one of us is going to die! <laughs> For me, it is a place of great sadness. Why? What happened? <laughs> No, no, do it right. So you have come. Let's go. I gladly put myself in my father's place. Bravely said. But you seem not so brave when first I entered this room. I'm really scary, right? Right? You're scared, right? What sound does an apple make? Hate you. Beast, her heart is pure. And it is for that pure heart I now beg. Look at how serious I am about this begging for her life with my big smile. Say your goodbyes then, for you shall never see your fair daughter again. The loss of one so precious as you will be great. In some small way, this treasure may lessen your family's pain. What? I didn't realize I could get this much for a daughter. I got two more, you know. And if you're by, I got two boys as well. Be gone before I strike you dead. There goes the worst father a girl could ever have. Oh, he's bald now. Ew. Well, obviously beauty is distraught now. Let's set the mood. <laughs> Or play it like it's a wacky scene. Your choice, movie. No! No! No, this can't be! No! Check out my Patreon for early mid-roll free episodes, meaning no ads will play in the middle, and other perks. 
by the way, there is a version of this that came with a doll. I was some sad I didn't get the doll version of this.